Now my next opportunity to catch some big run was going to be nearly 20 years later. It was the late uh, 2016, 2017 before another opportunity arose and it was again one of those times where being able to act fairly quickly really paid dividends. It was a Monday morning and uh, I was sat at my desk in the office and just switched the computer on and thought I'd have a quick flick on Facebook as you do. And literally the first thing I saw on there was this picture of a massive rud um, being held by a guy but cut off uh, in the mid torso. No idea who it was, um, but a little post under, underneath and the, uh, you know, obviously the, the name of the post was the, the fishery, which was uh, Buckland Nature Reserve down in Kent. Now again, by this time, I was living in the West Midlands, so Kent's hardly local. And uh, through my tench fishing, I'd spent quite a bit of time driving up and down and around the M25 as it was. So I wasn't that keen to, to do the long trip again, but opportunities to catch big rud, like I say, don't come along very often. So I had to grab it with both hands. So I sent off a quick uh, message to uh, the guy who put post and um, fortunately enough he got back to me almost straight away and um, as it happened I was driving down <coughs> I was driving down for some work um, over in Essex the next day so I uh, sent him a message back saying if it would be alright to come and have a look and have a chat and, uh, and just have a walk around the fishery and he was fine with that really really nice so Went down to Essex, got the work done fairly early in the day and then hightailed it round the M25 down to Kent to have a look at this lake. And it was an amazing place. Again, not what I was expecting, but a big, a big pit, uh, maybe 40 acres, but this time a chalk pit. Um, and one side of the lake, one of the, it was like a big rectangle, this lake, and one side of it, one of the long sides, was a sheer cliff of chalk, almost like the White Cliffs of Dover incredible place and a big exposed lake. I've never fished down that way very much in the past but it was on the, the estuary floodplain out from the Thames. Caught all the wind and the weather systems that were coming up the Thames uh, estuary and uh, a, a really surreal place to fish at times. So I really liked what I could see. Uh, there was no one else fishing at the time so I thought well that's it. Um, we had a good chat, a couple of cups of coffee, and got on like a house on fire. So I was offered a, a chance to come down and fish it if I wanted to, and um, really thought I need to jump on this quickly as, as best I can. And so made arrangements that I was going to be back down again that Thursday, hopefully for a couple of days, and uh, to see how things went. And we'll give it a go, see if any fish came along. So it was a long drive back up to the you know, West Mids, um, and then I th all the way thinking about how I was going to approach this lake. It was a deep chalk pit, again, gin clear water, what was I going to do? But in a couple of days, we'd be back down there and we'd find out. So Thursday couldn't really come around quick enough. And uh, so I loaded the gear up with everything I thought I might need, all the ledgering gear and float gear as well. Um, tons and tons of bait and all sorts of stuff. And it was back off on the long drive back down around the M25 for a couple of nights. And I arrived and it was still really quiet. There was one other lad, um, Fred, fishing the lake and he was never met him before, I knew of him. And uh, he was good enough to take me round and show me the swims where he'd been fishing and some of the features. And uh, that was it, it was time to get on with it. And really, there wasn't a massive amount of places to fish. Um, you really have one of the short banks was the most accessible and that's it, it, it transpired had been where most of the fish had been caught so far so that was good enough for me and really there was only six or seven swims along that bank quite well spaced out and uh, a nice place to fish so I had a mooch around spent 10-15 minutes in each swim and one of them in particular caught my eye because while I was stood there I could hear something splashing down the margins. And every time I looked, I just didn't quite catch the sight of what it was, but it was one of those I'd scan the lake and there'd be a splash and I'd turn around and it was gone, too late. But there was obviously something going on there and that was good enough for me. It was a starting point to give it a go. So all I'd been told was that the fish had been caught on the float, right in the margins in close. So that was again, good enough for me. That's what I'd set up and have a try with. 
rig the rods up, just one float rod, um, pretty standard tackle really, four pound main line to a three and a half pound hook length, um, a size 14 hook to begin with and a decent size float. Set it up and as you do, put a plummet on, start plumbing up the swim and crikey it was deep, even just off the margin it was dropping down to about 17, 18 feet, really, really deep. But on a couple of occasions, I was plumbing up, I had a really the weirdest thing happened. It was almost like the plummet would stop at half depth and then ooh, keep going again. Really, really odd. And of course, it took a little while for the penny to drop that well, the only thing that could be doing it was fish. And I was actually either hitting fish with the plummet as I was lowering it in, or they were grabbing it and then spitting out a lump of metal um, you know, almost instantly as it was falling through the water. So even though I put a great big float on and set the depth at you know, massively deep, it was right time to re-rig, shallowed everything up to about six foot and off we went. Knowing what I knew from the fish in the other pit years previously, I knew that Rudd loved sweet corn. And uh, again, there was a lot of small fish just up and down the margins, little Rudd. So it was obviously that I needed once again to try and find a bait that was going to be fairly selective for the bigger fish. So it was on with a piece of corn, cast it out, pouch of corn over the top, just get my eye in, float's gone under, oh, fish jigging around, a little rut of about six ounces, put it back with a pouch of bait, drew the float back into it, boom, it's gone again, another six ounce one. Well, I'd been in, in this situation before on the other lake, so I knew I had to try and be a bit more selective. So it was off with a hook, on with a size 12, two pieces of corn, Try again, this time pouch of corn, cast out, draw it back. This time it took a little bit longer for the float to go, it jiggled a bit, as obviously small fish had a go at it, but eventually, poof, away it went. And this time I struck and I was into a proper fish. And on the float gear, really nice balanced light float gear, it fought like a demon, completely different to actually catching them on the feeder at range. Now I was having a back one and back one and back one. To be honest, initially I didn't even know I'd hooked, but eventually I got, came in and it was a big rud, a proper big rud, um, another big two, um, probably about 214, I can't quite remember now, but uh, an absolute beautiful example of a big rud. And there we, we go, we caught one. We'd only been, probably been fishing for about an hour and uh, already I had a really special fish in the landing net. Took a quick picture as it was the first one and then it was back on with the fishing. And it was just a crazy afternoon. Um, I was really struggling. I think um, I'd had too much sun. It was really, really hot, still day, um, very muggy. And um, I'd obviously not drunk enough and I was starting to feel quite queasy. But um, the fish kept just kept coming. And um, I stuck with the corn, kept feeding corn, corn, fish over the top. And every so often the float would go Fishing six feet in 16 foot of water. Every time the float would go, boom. Be back winding, back winding, back winding, and eventually another big rud would hit the net. And I can't remember exactly what the scores were the doors on by the end of the day, but certainly I had a couple of uh, three pounders and several big twos. Unbelievable fishing on, on the waggler. You know, absolutely exceptional. Um, and that night, there was a massive change in the weather. Um, you could say so you could see you were in the Thames estuary um, and you could see the weather coming at you from miles away and I'd set the bivvy up on this bank and something happened to me that night that's never happened before or since in all these nights I've spent out on the bank and that's a storm came up and I could see this storm coming towards me a big thunder and lightning storm and the lake went from absolutely flat calm to like a maelstrom in the space of two minutes this storm came down and hit us and um, it absolutely flattened the bivvy, so I've never known anything like it. In the end, I had to unpeg the bivvy, flatten it down, um, fold the bed chair up, and went and slept in the car for a bit. It was that big a storm, um, massive sheet lightning for a couple of hours, and then the storm went up towards London. And uh, just when I thought everything was past, the wind direction changed back round, and it came back out and went back out to sea. Incredible. Um, and certainly not what I was expecting. And amazingly, it had an incredible effect on the fishing. I was up bright and early the next morning, sat out there feeding my corn, fishing, 
and it was as if someone had flicked a switch. I never had another bite for the rest of the day. Um, eventually, packed up that evening, scratching my head really. It was obvious that, well, maybe the, the storm and the amount of water it had dumped on us had uh, reduced the oxygen level, or maybe altered the water temperature, dropped the water temperature a bit, but the fish really didn't like it, and they'd switched off completely, and that was it. But I'd had a taste, and I'd had a taste of what the lake had to offer, and so I was definitely going to be back as quick as I could, which turned out to be the following week. So week two came around, and um, being self-employed, I was lucky enough that I could have two days off during the week. So got down there, and it was, again, really quiet. A couple of other people fishing this time. Again, people that I knew um, from around fishing other places. So it, it was really sociable fishing and nice to see some friendly faces. And this time, again, looked around, decided to fish a different spot this time, um, a spot that was almost on a point out into the lake, which gave me quite a big area of open water to fish. It seemed like a nice idea. I could tuck myself away there and um, had a lot of big expanse of water to, to fish to if any of the big rud came through in front of me. So again, the tactics were very simple. I actually even stepped up for this trip the size of the, the wagglers that I was fishing. I'd gone up to sort of three swan, um, big long wagglers. The reason being was the lake had an incredible undertow on it, even when uh, the wind wasn't really blowing. The float would constantly be dragging one way or the other. And fishing up in the water, there was nothing I could do about it. I couldn't sort of anchor, put an anchor shot on the bottom and hold it there. There was nothing I could do. It was just going to get dragged around. So the reason that I put a big float on, put the bulk shot a couple of foot underneath it, try and act as a bit of a sea anchor and hold it out there. And it worked to some extent, but um, again, I found that the fish would take on the drop, but you'd also catch them in with water, but as long as the float wasn't being dragged sideways, they didn't seem to like that at all. And the second trip went absolutely to plan. As it turned out, the fish were in front of me or turned up in front of me that evening, and I caught a few more big ones. And um, each morning and evening, just as the light levels was changing, uh, the fish would turn up again. I didn't even really bother fishing at night because the, the, the float fishing was so enjoyable. And um, it turned out to be a session of a lifetime really with, I lost count on the number of two pounders. I was slipping back anything that didn't look to be over three pound um, without even taking a picture or weighing it really. Um, and the fish gradually got bigger and bigger. It was absolutely exceptional. Now the one problem was <laughs> that uh, the biggest fish I hooked uh, the whole trip and an absolute giant um, came on the second day and uh, typical bite hooked it uh, float went away hooked this fish straight away back winding back winding back winding as it went off on its first run and then once it tied itself out pump it back in pump it back in and um, it didn't generally do very much you might get a couple more runs but in the deep water and fishing shallow uh, you had a real good chance of landing the fish and this one did almost exactly the same as what some of the others had done, which as it came almost within netting distance, it dived into a bit of weed that was just three or four feet out from the margins, really. Uh, again, the water sloped away very quickly. So just this band of weed, just pond weed along the edge of the lake. And this one did exactly the same as some of the others, and I did exactly the same as well, which was just keep the pressure on, and every other fish had eventually just found its way out and was normally then straight scooped up into the net. Except for this one, which I'd seen, had a really good look at it as it came in and rolled on the surface before getting a bit stuck in this weed, and it was an absolute giant. This time it got stuck in the weed, I kept the pressure on, it started to come, and the hook pulled. And that was it, absolute gutter. Um, not made much better by uh, a fish I had about half an hour later. Uh, which was a new PB of three pound eleven ounces. Um, that was nothing like the size of the one that I lost. Um, it was certainly a very very big fish indeed. But there you go. You can't win them all. Now the funny thing is that that uh, three eleven uh, that I had, the new PB, was the biggest one I caught from Buckland. But it actually turned out to be the same fish that. Uh, I'd seen on the internet on Facebook uh, before that first trip um, and that um, turned out to be 
quite a regular occurrence in fact and other people fished and we compared pictures and it turned out there was probably a lot less fish in there than we actually thought and a lot of repeat captures um, and um, certainly uh, that shoulder rud made a lot of people very very happy and the two biggest I saw were actually caught by the same person and I think they weighed from memory 315 or 315 and a half and just over four pound absolutely incredible amazing creatures um, I think it'll be a long time before I see any rudder that kind of size again and the enigma with Buckland was that we had those few absolutely exceptional trips by this time quite a few people were fishing there and um, we were all catching every you know virtually everyone who fished there had a PB it was incredible exciting fishing for a couple of weeks and really nice friendly fishing great bunch of guys and then the fish were gone and just disappeared we expected to come back the next summer and find them again and apart from one or two odd ones i think they never really showed again it was an absolute enigma but i think like i say there wasn't anything like as many fish in there as we first imagined and for some reason that year they just decided that they were going to live close to that bank for a couple of weeks and in such a big expanse of water where most of it we couldn't even fish they just moved off after that and we just never found them again and uh, that was the story of Buckland and so since then I've still managed to do a little bit of rod fishing you can uh, have a look at the films we've done at Frensham with my mate Duncan Sharman we've had some brilliant sessions up there again a lake where that's absolutely suited to the ground bait feeders quite long range fishing and the small pop-ups um, it's not traditional rud fishing but on the right water very very effective and then just last year I joined another carp syndicate I don't know why but another three and a half hour journey from home they never seem to be very close to home rud waters and only managed one night on there last year um, didn't catch anything except for a few small rud um, certainly not the giants that I know that live in there but again uh, another challenge, another quite big lake to have a go at in the future and uh, you never know, it could uh, throw up another PB but uh, fingers crossed and we'll give it a go later this summer and see how we get on. So if you ever get the chance, make the most of rud fishing, it tends to be very ephemeral, it never lasts for long so make sure you, you make the most of every opportunity, they're absolutely stunning fish and I highly recommend it, especially if you can catch them on the float brilliant brilliant fun so i hope that this has been in, enjoyable if you stuck with me thanks very much give us a thumbs up if you've uh, enjoyed my towels and i'll see you again soon thanks very much for watching <laughs>